What is going on YouTube? Bronze Tech here, reviewing two Ryzen laptops that are actually dominating the market right now. According to reviews, these are very good laptops. One of them is a really good laptop, the other is a lot of people are mad about it. But I wanted to dive into it, give you my personal opinion on these two laptops. And you know, from a average consumer's standpoint, I think these are really good for the money as well. I always try to choose products that have really good value. Um, especially with these Ryzen uh, CPUs coming out. So these are the Zephyrus G-Line, which is their top-of-the-line models per se, and these are actually equipped with Ryzen 4000 series CPUs, so you know they're going to be really fast. So another laptop that I'm missing out of this lineup, which I should have compared but I wasn't able to attain, is the Zephyrus M15 which actually uses Intel processor, but if it came with a, a Ryzen processor, processor I, would actually, I would actually consider it, but right now you can get all these at Best Buy. I think the G14 actually just came out at Walmart. Okay, so let's get into the review. I hope you guys like it. All right, so the G14 actually has the Ryzen 9 4900HS. Uh, Ryzen processor and it's it's only around like 200, 200 megahertz boost clock faster than the Zephyrus G14 which has the Ryzen 7 4800HS processor these are very fast processors they're both eight cores this one is actually this one actually scores lower on Cinebench I think it's because of the BIOS update Asus decided to release a BIOS update that limits the the CPU uh, thermal uh, the CPU power that goes into it let's talk about the panel so the panel on the G15 actually, uh, the specs are laid out here. It only has 55% sRGB according to the specs, but I really do like the brightness on the screen and I'm actually editing videos on the screen and it's not too bad, but for people who, who really need those accurate colors, this is not the screen for you. Go ahead and opt for the 240 hertz screen that can be found for around $200 more or you can opt for the more color accurate G14. It's a smaller screen of 14 inches. The only drawback of this screen is that it has a really bad response time. I personally did not notice it when I was gaming. I, I still stuck to the top of the leaderboards when I was playing COD and quick scope some noobs. So both of these have the RTX 2060 Max-Q and these go up to, I, I believe 65 watts. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you know, if when looking for a 2060, you de definitely got to look for the wattages. In any GPU, you got to look for the wattages. Um, and I know there's a good video, again, by the man, the myth legend, Bob of all trades, where he uh, lays out all the different um, TDPs for the end wattages for each GPU. And basically, you want to look for around this price range, which a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars. Definitely look for something that has like you know 110 watts, uh, the 2060, which the RP15 has right now. All right, so build quality and build design. Now, the G14 is 14 inches, and after using both, I can say I definitely miss the 15-inch design. And you know, 14 inches is great, but it feels like I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch or something. So. If you don't like small screens for gaming, because I personally can, can take advantage of a larger screen, because if you're playing, you know, first person shooters, for example, if you wanna snipe and you, you, if you definitely need that extra screen real estate to see your enemies better, definitely opt for a bigger screen when you're gaming. And now the G15 actually attracts the most smudges I've ever seen, aside from the Razer Blade. That one's a smudge, smudgeaholic. The G15 is definitely one of my favorite design laptops of 2020. And the reason I'm saying this is because it's super slim. It reminds me of the, the G66 Stealth, which is super slim. And you know, it's something that I really like in laptops, especially, especially for its portability. I mean, the G14 is slim as well. But again, the 14 inch form factor, after comparing a 15 inch to a 14 inch, I tried gaming on it. I feel like the 15 inch definitely wins for gaming. Now, so for the G15, it actually has a lower travel distance on the keyboard than the G14. So if you look at the G14, definitely a lot click, definitely more distance travel. So if you want more travel distance, get the G14. The touchpad is Actually pretty small, kind of reminds me of the HP NV13 series. Um, it's pretty small, I definitely prefer a larger touchpad, but it is glass, so it's decent. All right, as far as the speakers go, the G15 speakers are terrible. 
As you can see, down the bottom, right where the feet of the, the, the laptop sits. So basically it's being blocked by whatever you put it on. If you put it on your bed, it's definitely gonna get blocked. You have to put it on a flat surface, a hard surface that allows sound to come out to the sides. Now the G14 speakers are way better. It actually comes out from the top and you know, it's definitely front firing to you more. Not as much as, you know, MacBook Pros or the Razer Blade, where the speakers are actually front firing. That's actually my top preference when it comes to laptop speakers. So as far as internals go, the only difference between the, uh, the Zephyrus G15 is that this one actually has two spots for NVMEs and the G14 only has one spot. Again, with the Zephyrus line, you're only gonna get one spot for the RAM slot and that's this, each of these have 16 gigabytes in them and another eight is soldered on. So it's gonna be still dual channel, but I believe that if you mismatch a one of the, the, the available slots with like a 16 gigabytes or higher, uh, only eight gigabytes of that will be used for dual channel RAM. Now let's talk about the vents uh, on the, G4, the G15. Apparently it's blocked and I can't see anything through these vents. Uh, Asus actually, to combat this, problem of overheating with the G15, they installed a new update that makes this makes this laptop run cooler. I'll talk more about it in the performance section. All right, so performance wise, so the Zephyrus G14 has the Ryzen 9 processor while the Zephyrus G15 has the Ryzen 7 processor. And I believe the boost clock is a difference of only 200 megahertz. So really not much should be different, right? I downloaded Cinebench R20 to kind of get a gauge of how the performance runs between the two. So here are the scores. All right, so as you can see here, I included the HP Omen 15 with the Ryzen 7 4800H processor, and it scores around 300 to 400 points more than the G14 and almost 700 points more than the G15. So the new BIOS update that I got for the Zephyrus G15 actually limits the CPU to 41 watts during the Cinebench rendering process. And here are the time spy scores. All right, so what we can see here from the 2060 Max-Q variant of the 2060, it's not far behind from the 1660 Ti 80-watt, but it's ridiculous that AMD can't put any stronger GPUs in their laptops. So here are the CPU temps during gaming and during rendering. The GPU temps are fine in my case, but the CPU temps were very high. So in order to mitigate this problem, I had to disable boost I'll leave a tutorial in the link below where you can find out how to do that. Once you disable boost, you're able to see temperatures in the mid 80s and there's gonna be no problems with heat. So Asus has done a wonderful job of implementing power saving graphics options, but you actually need to enable it. So I'm gonna leave a Reddit tutorial that I found. It's gonna allow you to reach 10 hours of watching videos, around five hours of doing productivity work. And I think this is one of the best and longest lasting Ryzen laptops available. So. Overall, I like what Asus has I like what Asus has done by providing these laptops to us. They actually partnered with Ryzen to provide some really good um, CPUs, but unfortunately, it's still limited by, you know, the the, the 60 watt RTX 20, the 65 watt RTX 20 Max-Q. Uh, and also, I think that the RTX 2070 Max-Q is only paired up with Intel, which is unfortunate. But again, these laptops are the best. I feel like, you know, the build quality is really good and also the performance is really good for what you get. Again, it's also limited by a little bit of thermals, but if you know how to work your way around uh, using uh, process power management and editing the registry to do that, then you could definitely, you know, fix that problem. And then also I wanna talk about the M15. The M15 is something I got to see at Best Buy and actually turn on and look at the colors. and. It's a really nice machine because the the deck of the keyboard is actually matte or like this gummy texture matte feeling and it's something that I really loved about the XPS series and it makes the experience the you know the typing experience experience much better especially if you are working for long hours on and ha get some sweaty palms that doesn't happen to me if Asus can supply the M15 with a Ryzen processor uh, then that's definitely the one to get because I feel like the build quality on that is superb. I really like the M15. It has the better screen, the 240 hertz screen, and 
that's just 10 times better than what the G15's 144 hertz screen has. I recommend that if you're looking for just pure graphical performance, but right now, I'm looking for something that has the Ryzen 4000 series CPU in addition with a good GPU, and that's just not available. So overall, if I had to choose one, I would choose the G14 with the 240 hertz Pantone calibrated display. The reason being is I need the 15 inch options. It's better for me for my workflow when I'm working with Excel documents or when I'm playing video games, I definitely need to pinpoint my enemies easier. And the 14 inches, I gave it a try. It was fine for a few moments, but once I got the G14 to compare it with, this guy had no chance. So that will do it. Hope you guys like this video, share it, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.